It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Andy and Renee are here, but barely because they're running out the door to get their iPad mini with Retina Display, Apple's secret release. Up next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 376, recorded November 12th, 2013. Now with more angstroms. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used iPhone, iPad, or other Apple product is worth at gazelle.com. And by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code MacBreak11. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show that covers your Apple needs. And ladies and gentlemen, our Apple guys are here. Andy Anako from the Chicago Sun Times with his cows and his shuttle. Cows yes. at the Space Shuttle, the name of this show. <laughs> exactly. That, that's what's going to be painted on the side of my new custom Chevy van that I'm having commissioned. <laughs> um, some of them will have Pegasus wings and there will be a, a sort of a Tinkerbell sort of effect, but we can't use the actual <laughs> Tinkerbell. Uh, but it, it's going to be quite, quite impressive. I think that uh, when you, uh, when we, when we go to the rally uh, in four months from now, it's, it's going to be the bell of the ball. I'm sure. How about you, Renee Ritchie? iMore.com. Hi, Ori Leo. I'm good. I'm Not tired. I waited up all night to see if those stupid pre-orders would go live, and then I waited up to see if I could get one. <laughs> Did you get a mini? I order. I ended up ordering two because the one I wanted is only shipping in five to ten days, and that means it'll get here. I don't know. Yeah. To Christmas, so then I ordered one of the ones that was instantly available, and now, like an idiot, I'm refreshing the personal pickup options on the web page. Go right now to uh, store.apple.com, kids, and get your mini while you can. What a surprise that they they slipstream that! I found out myself last night when I got an email from a guy at Best Buy who said I am holding in my hands an iPad Mini with Retina because apparently they started arriving at the Best Buys and they were allowed to sell them immediately. So if you find the right store, now I, I of course, immediately ordered an iPad Air. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Apple, for letting me cancel. Uh, <laughs> and uh, then figured out my error and ordered an iPad Mini. Um, one to three days, on, you couldn't get it engraved if you wanted five to ten days. You couldn't get anything more than 32 gigs if you wanted uh, one Wi-Fi, to three days. 16 and 32 Wi-Fi were one to three That's days. That's what I got. All the rest were five to ten. I got a 32 <laughs> Wi-Fi. No, no. If, App if Apple were a different sort of company, they would probably realize that, look, we got way too many. We don't know how we're possibly going to sell uh, MacBook retinas with, uh, with only 16 gigabytes of storage. I know we will just basically have people wait two months for delivery on the 256 gig models. They will buy the model they don't want if that's the only one they can get in the next two or three days because it's the new thing. Well, um this is the other question mark. Uh, no, uh, nowhere in my area had pickup at the Apple stores. Did, has anybody reported that you can get Apple store pickup? It's supposed to go live some point today, maybe tonight, maybe around 8 p.m., and then you'll be able to pick them up tomorrow. At ah. least that's what most places. Uh, some people are selling them. Some stores are selling them. Best Buy's, you know. Uh, whatever they've maybe, got. It might be a handful, yeah. but uh, whatever they've got, yeah. And no one seems to know what they'll get in stock tomorrow. So when you when you go at 8 p.m. <laughs> or whatever, whatever you is, get. you'll be able to see what's available. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody this here in the studio watch. audience, uh, iPad mini with Retina, anybody? No, no, no. I thought that's why you were up early. No, okay. <laughs> Rats. Um, anybody wants to come over to the Brickhouse Studios, bring your mini with retina display. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Now, I am um, under the uh, assumption that uh, they're going to be in short supply, but maybe not. No, they they are. I mean, yeah, they, they're going to, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they're definitely going to be short packed. If you if you really, really, really want to have one for, for the holidays, you're going to have to take pretty much whatever you're going to get because I don't I don't hear anything encouraging about the availability of iPad minis. Yeah. Um, I have still have enough for a retail launch, which is kind of telling. Right. All yeah. I have is order being processed, available to ship uh, one to three business days, but then delivers November 20th to 22nd. Yeah. So I... Something hinky's going on. 
I fell for this with the air. I did second day shipping, and it still came the same amount of time, no matter what. It's an estimate, Leo. It's not a guarantee. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they're actually in the country yet? They're probably uh, some, on a, in, some stores have them. Yeah. Some stores have them. Yeah. Weird. My, uh, air, my uh, air, sorry, my iPad Mini re um, smart cover has already shipped. I love it when you order those things and you get the meal. It's shipped and you open it up and it's always just the cover or the case. Yeah. Oh yeah, my red cover is on, on its yes. way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just what I need. Lickety split. Lickety split by the postal service delivers any minute. Actually, they, even that says November, available ship within 24 hours delivers November 19th. Do they, those delivery estimates, they're intentionally long. Yeah, I mean, especially when they, they're going they, cross-border because you never know what's going right. to happen. Customs. And everything is coming from China probably at this point. Yeah, I'll, I'll even be curious to see if uh, if these, the first ones to be delivered, have the same sort of like slightly yellowing sort of problem right. that a lot of the early glue, devices have. The glue is still I, wet. I, I, exactly. <laughs> I bet that a lot of adhesives are still curing on this on this thing. And if this were the iPad, if this were the iPad uh, Mini C with plastic colors, it would be, you'd see a little bit of red like rubbing off on the inside of the box, maybe even <laughs> dripping off of the corner of the package. <laughs> Oh, I mean, the Lord. crazy thing is reviewers. I mean, Jim Dalrymple already posted his review. Reviewers were only getting them today, so this is not this is a not a normal product release by any stretch of the imagination. He posted his review even though he just got it. it I mean, it's not a huge difference. It's it's a Retina display, and Jim opened. He's used it at the Apple campus, and then he used it when he was here, and he wrote up his thoughts. Jim doesn't do he doesn't do a Nantech style reviews. He does very experiential reviews. So his is all about you no longer have the compromise of the Retina display when you're using an iPad Mini. Uh, but I think it's telling that you know Apple was only giving these to the media reviewers today, and right. you know they're already shipping them. Uh, so uh, his review at uh, loopinsight.com. Uh, he's a mini guy like me. Us mm -hmm. big guys like small devices. It seems. Seeing Jim with an 11-inch MacBook Air <laughs> is always gonna. That's my biggest memory of him. Is at WWDC <laughs> with an 11-inch MacBook Air. <laughs> Uh, he, like me, said he, the fact that the mini last year's mini ha didn't have a retina display was a sacrifice I was willing to make for the size. Um, but even though, uh, even when I landed in New York last night, I reached for the mini, even though I had the iPad Air in my bag. So, and I, I'm kind of feeling that too. Now that I've seen and played with the Air, that I still want the mini, especially since there's no, it's a no compromise device this year. Uh, the screen size is still a compromise, but yeah, in terms of tech specs. I mean, this was this was one where I almost refused to believe that it was going to be technically on the par, on par with the iPad Air because I figured that what incentive would Apple have to to in, to decrease their margins by even why would they put all the same components in the same thing if they could save three dollars and have three more dollars worth of profit on a device that is not even necessarily intended to do all the work of the iPad Air? So I was assuming that this would have like less application RAM or there'd be something different, but. If there's anything different between the two, the only we're not going to learn about it until I fix it tears it down and gets exactly. uh, gets the complete parts list. They when we had the I fix it tear down, we'll do a mini tear down as well as a PlayStation Four and Xbox One tear down. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna milk tear these guys. Down. We're gonna tear everything down. Milk <laughs> these guys for everything they got. But uh, when they did the iPad Air tear down a couple of weeks ago, maybe just a week ago now, Chad. Chad, it wasn't that long ago. A week last Sunday. <laughs> it was yeah, it was last Sunday. Uh, <laughs> It feels like ages ago. Yeah. The one, the one thing they could they said could be different is clock speed. Yeah. So uh, that's the thing to watch, I guess. Uh, you, you know, Apple doesn't reveal. They don't even reveal how much RAM's in these things. But only as, Anand knows for sure. Only Anand knows for sure. <laughs> so um, now on the site, somebody's saying on the site they don't show the M7 processor, but it's in there. yeah, I think it is because Jim says, of course, the inclusion of the M7 gives developers the opportunity. Use the data collected from the integrated accelerometers, gyroscopes, and compasses. So he certainly implies it's there. Yeah, it's, it's atomically identical, except in size. And possibly clock speed. Yeah. That's about the only... The iPad mini, he says, can easily be your only iPad. The fact is, it always could. In fact, it was mine. I mean, I have, I have always had other iPads, but they were at work. I always carried the mini only. But you could do so now, he goes on, without feeling like you're giving something up in return for the size. The iPad mini is small. It has a retina display, and it's the most powerful iPad to date. There's just nothing bad to say about the iPad Mini. That's the three-hour review. Again, <laughs> again I, 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 have to, I have to say, having used both of them and having relied on the full-size iPad, they're spec for spec, tech spec for tech spec, they're the same. But I do still insist that there is a difference between the relationship 
between your eyes and your hands and a full and a 9.7 inch tablet and the relationship between a smaller tablet. If you if you really do think that you're going to be immersed in this device for work that lasts more than an hour or two, mm. I really think that you will be pleased. Mm. I think most people would be uh, be happier with a full sized iPad than with a mini. I don't think there's no difference between the two, and I don't think. The only, the only the only opinion I've heard expressed that I would absolutely categorically say is wrong is when people say there's no reason for a full sized iPad anymore. Well, oh, I disagree on that. Categorically yeah. wrong, right? I think and we should have a choice, though. That's all. That. You know, exactly. Yeah. It's kind of. I, I do think that it comes down to a, an hour long discussion can collapse down into two sentences, meaning that if you want uh, if if you want a, a a mobile device that can run desktop class software, then you want the iPad Mini. If you want a desktop class apps in a smaller form factor, then what you want is the full-sized iPad. And I have to say, I was, you know, I've been uh, using the iPhone 5S, you know, just because I want to give it a chance, even though I'm kind of more so funny. So yesterday or Sunday on Twit, I was the guy with a Nexus 5, and Nick Bilton has a 5S, Harper Reed has a 5S, um, and who else was there that had a 5S? Chad forgot Will, to. Will, Will Harris. <laughs> and they all had iPhone 5Ss, and they all said, your phone is too big. <laughs> I said, no, it's not. It's just right. So it's really a matter of personal taste. But having used bigger phones for quite some time now, when I do go back to the the uh, the 5S, I find it very hard to type. You know, I mean, it's a retina display, so it's super crisp, super, super beautiful. But I just find it very difficult uh, to type in passwords and stuff. <laughs> Look at you. Tiny phones. You yeah, show tiny phones off. Tiny phones He's got a five, an Nexus Five and a ten Lumia ten twenty and an iPhone five S. And the fact yeah, that iPhone five does look small. I mean, they do. It feels yeah, small. Me, me too. I mean, it's 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 hard it's hard for me to really use it as a content device. But the thing is that Apple it, Apple has their own like signature solutions to that, where it's uh, the keyboard is smaller, but they put a lot more work into trying to guess what what key that you intended to type, as opposed right. to making the keys bigger so that you can hit them more accurately. So I, in, in terms of typing speed, I can't say that I can type faster on my larger Nexus 5 or Galaxy S3 than I can on the smaller iPhone. What makes the other phones faster is other features they've put in. But again, it's Apple's Apple's uh, guide is always to put as much intelligence behind the button and not put more buttons in. Well, and so, but I guess my point is, uh, you know, for for Nick Bilton, Will Harris, and Harper Reed, this wasn't too small for me. It was, it, 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 you know, they thought my phone was yeah, exactly. too big. It's, it's perception. Have what you want is the point, and right. I think a choice right. is great. And so I like the mini. You know, ironically, yeah. I don't. And, and the iPad is too big for me. And isn't it great that Apple did not decided not to put in these artificial distinctions yes. and say that well we have to we have to maintain a marketing separation between the power machine that costs more money right. and the affordable one? They just said no, nope, let's just put A7s and everything. Let's give them. Let's not BS people like that. People like, there are people who want the larger. There are people who want the smaller. If you want the smaller, you can't be talked into getting the other one, and vice versa. So why why hoodwink people into getting less power than we can deliver? But that is not what they did last year. Maybe because they couldn't. <laughs> But it's very different yeah. from last year's strategy where there was a distinct difference in, in not merely size but power and speed between the iPad full size and the mini. And this I year it's funny. When you see people talk about it, it's like they, they, they look at the iPad mini and they say, oh, I could have everything that the iPad Air has, only smaller. Or they look at the iPad Air and say, I could have everything the iPad mini has, but just a bigger screen. <laughs> right. And it's almost like the glass half full, glass half empty. They have their preference. And it, it feels like now they're getting everything they want in their preference. It's no compromise, but it makes it hard, yeah. hard to choose. But at least you have the choice. But yeah. I, it does kind of underscore what I always felt, and apparently Dalrymple felt about the last year's mini is that gosh if it only had a retina display and that and i didn't even expect them to put the, uh, the the latest chip in there i mean that's gravy as far as i'm concerned but that does this go back to the 64-bit everywhere thing that apple wanted to do is that why they did that who knows i i, I was i was trying i was trying to figure out if it had something to do with the retina display itself it's possible that there's a lot of support for it that's actually wired into the A7 and to put a lesser processor in there would re re result in a uh, in a degraded uh, right. in a degraded performance so so they have never had an X chip in an iPad mini it went from an A5 to an A7 and the X chips are quad core GPUs they're bigger they're hotter uh, and that they're the reason why the A why the iPad 4 wasn't thin and light like the mini right. uh, so it, it's highly likely that the A7 makes all this super thin and super light and retina and you and know battery and everything else yep. yeah and battery well it all we don't have a teardown schedule I'm sure I fix this scrambling right now because <laughs> 
Uh, we thought it would be out November 29th. Um, you know, we're all kind of surprised that the mini is out with Retina is out today. Because uh, they said end of end of November. This is definitely not the end of November. It's not even halfway through November. W it what was happened? flabbergasting. I mean, like I, the last I heard was the 22nd, and then there was that Apple has this global service exchange portal where um, people who want to order parts or or resellers go to you know to, to do their business, and it listed it as becoming available today. And I looked at it, and it, GSX can be wrong. I mean, someone could enter; like, they could transpose digits. It could be 21 or 22 instead of 12, and it was one data point. So I was like, that that's crazy. Apple will not launch it in the middle of the night without announcing it for not doing <laughs> yes, any of this. Uh, and then the store goes down and it was like oh the store is down it must be coming but the store goes down all the time for maintenance and apple listed right. it as being down for four hours of maintenance last night it was on apple status page so i'm still looking at it going uh, you know and i, I talked to a lot of people and everyone's like you know there's no the review units haven't gone out yet that's tomorrow uh you know apple's probably going to want the reviews out before the units are all these things were like oh this must just be an error and then lo and behold three o'clock a.m is that when it was three a.m eastern 12 12 12, 12 a.m. Cupertino, center of the universe time. It went At live At midnight everywhere. Cupertino. See, yeah, so, and, and I, I got, I had received the email uh, last night uh, from the guy at Best Buy, and I kind of wasn't sure if it was a hoax email. I figured, well, he's, it's probably true, but it's bizarre. And I got up in the morning. What? Yeah. So Richard Devine at Imore has one. Yes, he, he, he found one in England already. Uh, they're in the future. <laughs> <laughs> they're in the future in England. So he has uh, he has the the first look. Um, yeah, he loves it already. He actually took pictures before he took it home. I love that. That's dedication. This is at the Apple Store. Uh, he he said, I, "But I haven't even got it home yet." But here's the pictures. I would have done the same thing had I had the chance. Absolutely. I, I was I was uh, really I was refreshing the page a lot to see if I could pick it up anywhere. I was willing to drive to uh, San Francisco to. Pick one up, but no one has one. No. For pick Again, up. your local reseller or your Best Buy or someone might, and they might be willing to part with it. Just but it's by really, chance. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you can't. I guess I could have called. I see. I wasn't thinking. I should have called Best Buy, and and uh, and whips down there. Well, I'm hoping before the show's over, somebody will drop one off. <laughs> These things happen. <laughs> Not the scalpers. Not the scalpers. We yeah. Eight thousand dollars. Got it in gold, eight thousand bucks. Ah, so that's all the good news. <laughs> There's a lot of <laughs> negative news too. Um, will it be an IGZO IGZO display on the uh, Mini, or because that's on the air, right? Displaymate said yes. I asked Brian Klug at Anantech because he's he's an optical engineer and he's brilliant. He said he so wasn't good. convinced yet, and until he tells me he's convinced, I'm I'm not going to write about it. But Displaymate seems to think it's likely just because of the power efficiency they're getting off that panel to allow for the battery life. Indium gala gala indium galanide uh, zinc oxide gala gala indium gallium zinc oxide. Ten dollar word. I like saying that, and it's pronounced Igzo. Is that right? Yeah. So the idea of IGZO, uh, and by the way, Apple never says IGZO. No. <laughs> I probably shouldn't either. But uh, but all the Sonera and others who have looked at it are pretty sure it is an IGZO display. What do you get from IGZO? Thinness and efficiency. So it, it lets it. The problem with the iPads last year is that they required so much backlight for Retina. I forget the exact number, 48 or 36 or something like that. Uh, and this panel um, allows them to do much more efficiency. They have much fewer LED backlights, which again puts less strain on the battery. And the way the battery works is uh, the higher the peaks, when you when you put a lot of strain, a lot of demand on it, it drains faster. So batteries aren't really getting better. We're getting better at cheating them. And part of cheating them uh -huh. is to keep them in a stable state for longer. So this uh, IGZO is a much more energy efficient technology. It's not quite as efficient as what Amazon um, is using in the Kindles, but it, it's at much higher yield rates, right? What are now, they using in like, the Kindles? I forget. T, some, some. There's something even better than IGZO? <laughs> yes, but it's harder to make. So like when you're when Amazon's you're using Kindle, low temperature polysilicon, I yes. think that's pronounced lit pups. <laughs> But apparently you can't make as many of those yet, and Apple has to, you know, they always they're, they're, they are in some ways victimized by the amount of iPads they have to make. Right. Um, IGZO, uh, according uh, to uh, Sonera, <laughs> um, what was it? It was good. Significantly better electron mobility. <laughs> That's what you want. <laughs> when they start describing they, they, retina to you in arc light minutes, Leo, you know you got to open Wikipedia and get an adult beverage. <laughs> they yeah, greased like, up the electrons. 
it's like it's it's like pornography has to slide into harder and harder core you know <laughs> simulation it's like it, you got that you, you you can't now just simply like put up a page and say here's how readable it is at which distance no. now you have to say well i'm i'm getting a higher angstrom count on the reflexivity <laughs> of the red <laughs> It, it seems like it's. It says it's supposed to be sixty six eighty angstroms. I'm getting seven thousand. I think. I think. Well, well, well I, I sent I sent off a couple of pixels to CERN for for, for for bombardment. When we get their results back in three months, then we'll finally settle this issue. I'm I'm still back in double twist displays. I don't know. Uh, I don't, <laughs> CRT for the win. Yeah, Super. I don't understand this stuff. So so they've got significantly improved significantly improved electron mobility or sebum. Um, and that means a fifty-seven percent power efficiency. Yeah, they, they they make they they make the electron traces out of lard now, so it's ni nice and slippery. <laughs> you don't you don't have any electrons getting clogged up in the filter. You don't have to change the electron filters in this device as, as often as you had to with the old technology. So Nera <laughs> says. So Nera says compared to the fourth generation, screen ref reflectance is decreased by twenty-three percent. Peak brightness increased by seven percent. This is on the air, but presumably the the retina would uh, the mini would have the same benefits. Contrast rating, if it has an exo display, contrast rating for high ambient light increased by thirty two percent. Absolute color accuracy and image contrast fidelity very good. Below the fire a little bit. Um, so yeah, exo is a is a good move. We expected exo. We were th we were thinking exo all along. Every year they rumor exo, and once you know once eventually they'll be right. Yeah. Indium. Interesting how Gal okay, I'm not gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna say indium gallium. Indium gallium zinc oxide. I think I've got it right now. Omnes gallium in partes trace divisa. <laughs> the Gallic Wars. Very good. Ten points to the man in uh, black. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. With his CU, he's a buff. <laughs> His CU shirt on. My son thanks you. There you go. Yeah. Whatever contribution I've made to whatever building fund that now you as the parent of, <laughs> of a student does not have to pay for, I'm well, happy to. I've learned now that he's going to be living in the Sigma Pi house starting next year, so I don't think it matters anymore. <laughs> but if you want to contribute to the Toga Fund, <laughs> you're more than welcome. I'll, 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 I'll send him a case of Epicac. Just in case. When Henry was born, Henry's a freshman at the uh, University of Colorado Boulder. When Henry was born, we said he was born in a toga. We, I mean, the kid from, it's so amazing. We knew he was going to be a frat boy. It was just like he was made for it. <laughs> I'm trying to unpack exactly what that means. Yeah, well, party well, in know, his when, pants. When, I mean, the guy was well, like, you when, know. When he, was, when he was born, he was covered with, with sickening fluids and tended to cry and scream and, and puke a lot, so I suppose. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's it, right? <laughs> there, it's just from, from he, you know, I have a picture of him like four years old going, I mean, the you know, <laughs> winking thumbs up. He was a bro from way back. All right, back to 17% glass, 70% touch sensor, improved retina display. I'm excited. I can't wait to get my Mini. I can't wait. Of course, the reason I bought the original Mini was to play uh, Simpsons Tapped Out. I'll have to find a new <laughs> game now. Now you can do that in Retina. Retina Tapped Out. Retina Tapped Out. Ooh, I would if, uh, if they'd fixed it. So, uh, they, <laughs> Electronic Arts... You owe me 1,400 donuts. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, this brings up, now that we've gone through IGZO, Sapphire. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we, I don't know, did we mention this last week? I don't think, I think it happened after uh, the show last week. Apple bought into a big Sapphire production <laughs> company. Sapphire, I know from watch, uh, watch crystals is very hard, harder even than Gorilla Glass. It has some negatives, you know. I mean, it's not, it's not, you know, you're, there's trade-offs, but it is a harder. And Apple does use Sapphire, apparently, to protect the button here on the home button, right? And there's Sapphire used to protect the camera sensor. But uh, this multi-year alliance with GT Advanced Technologies, Apple has apparently paid more than half a billion dollars to this company. <laughs> the kind, that's the kind of money where you're buying up all the Sapphire production for the next five years, if you ask me. Um, 
and the thought is, well, could it be that they just they want more of these sensors and more of these cameras, or might it be they want to use Sapphire for something else? Bum, bum, bum. Uh, 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 like a watch. Like maybe, like exactly, like maybe a watch face. Yeah. Although, it is harder than Gorilla Glass. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to, um, you know, make a, I mean, it would be a selling point. Yeah, this is the article. The TechCrunch article is pretty good. Um, There's a follow-up that Panzerino did as well where he explained some new process that used like an ion cannon to shear off atoms so they could make super thin ones and bond them with glass and so they can make much more of them cheaper. Uh, and, you know, it, the way they use an Intel display now, but they could do the same thing with Sapphire instead at a much higher yield and a much cheaper price than was possible before. You're talking about, of course, the Hyperion ion cannon. Yes. <laughs> As all, you know, good-hearted nerds know and love. I want one. I don't even know what it is. I just like the name. I want to and put the, it on a shark. Did you see the picture of the Hyperion Ion Cannon? That looks dangerous. That looks like uh, that could be the Empire's uh, technology. <laughs> that looks like it could heat up your burrito in less than three seconds. <laughs> Yeah, mo a lot of watches have these, but the the pro of course the issue is making them bigger, uh, but also you know bigger uh, sapphire displays. But also I think um, not merely uh, bigger, but um, changing some of the characteristics of sapphire, which is not ideal. It does change the the uh, refraction uh, getting into your angstroms. Talking about your angstroms over there, Mister Nico. <laughs> An ion cannon allows. Twin Creeks to place wafers around the edge of the device, smash them with hydrogen ions, and they with uh, the they accumulate twenty micrometers from the surface of each wave wafer. A robotic arm then transports the wafers to a furnace where the ions. Here's the trick: exp <laughs> expand in the hydrogen gas, causing that twenty micrometer thick layer to shear off. I love this part. Basically, you get really, you don't have to saw the sapphire. You can have a 20 micrometer thick piece of sapphire. They do it in solar panels, apparently. Um, right now, the cost of sapphire uh, sapphire display, $30. Uh, MIT said that, or somebody in the MIT Technology Review said they probably thought it dropped to 20 bucks in a couple of years. Gorilla Glass is less than $3, so it's a very expensive technology. You can just see this in the Apple video. You can see Johnny and I have talking about the Hyper Ion Cannon just <sighs> blasting away. Get ready. <laughs> Apple did fire a patent called Sapphire Laminates, in which it discusses a variety of ways to laminate sapphire sheets together with other sapphire sheets or with glass. Mm. Mm. And we know that when you one of the features of laminating a product is that you can make a curved piece of glass very easily. Oh. Ooh. Bum, 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 I think I, I I I think that you're right. I think that if if and when Apple comes out with a watch, half of it is just, is going to go into the half of the demonstration is going to go into the construction of the thing, because I think that this will. Uh, Apple had their hands their hands full with the iPhone producing a phone that would look okay when it's inside a, a, a lint filled pocket full of keys and coins <laughs> and stuff like that. But when you have like a, a device on your wrist that is exposed to the elements, is going to be sweated on. It's going to be you got. You get one of these he-manly arms with all these filthy little hairs on it. Uh, <laughs> also, uh, the American building industry. Now, I am exactly average height for an American male. And it means that if I'm wearing a watch, it is exactly the, the watch when I'm walking and swinging my arms is at exactly the right height to, to basically bash into a metal doorknob. And every watch <laughs> I have has like some scratches right here from where it hit a, when it hit a doorknob. And I, I think that that's going to be one of the biggest issues Apple's going to have if if I, I wonder how much more difficult the process would have been if if Steve were around and still able to say no categorically no a thousand times no we are not going to do a watch that looks like this after four <laughs> months and I, I it's 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 going to be it's going to be such a struggle I think well as long as we're doing material science this material science portion of the show brought to you by Gazelle.com let's mention <laughs> Global Foundries which is a little little chip fab up in upstate New York. Uh, John, uh, I'm sorry, Eric Hesseldahl at uh, All Things D says, don't get too excited about this story. It came from the Albany Times <laughs> Union uh, saying that, app, that Apple may start using global foundries to churn out chips f the, uh, for the iPhones and iPads. Apparently, it's merely, it doesn't mean Apple's abandoning Samsung. 
It merely is what they call flex capacity, ability to, and when, it, when needed, turn up capacity a little higher. It goes to 11, thanks to Global Foundries. They have the right to abandon Samsung, but they lack the capacity. That's right. <laughs> That's uh, or, right. Or to, or to summarize it, I just can't quit you, Samsung. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, how many? I mean, you know, I mean, good Lord, the number of devices they're cranking out. Yeah, it's a big order. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although the idea of A8 chips on an Intel 14 nanometer fab is nerd dream worthy. Is that what Global Foundries does? They're 14 nanometer? No, only Intel, but Intel started doing some ARM chips. So Right. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. And that's basically capitulation, Intel, which makes the x86 chips they can never get anybody to use in mobile devices, only uh, desktop cat class devices. It's pragmatic, Leo. It's, it's, it's betrayal pragmatism. It's, yeah, <laughs> right. They keep, you know, they kept trying to make uh, mobile chips. Nobody wanted them. So what the hell? Let's make some ARM chips. We got the fabs. <laughs> ARM, it, it, ARM, which was started by Apple with uh, mm -hmm. Acorn way back when Apple divested a long time ago, um, is not is a, what they call a fabless foundry. They don't. They just design them, and then other companies like Samsung and TI and others make them. So Intel could easily just license it and make it. And the nice thing about Apple is that they they. They make money off the whole phone. They don't have to worry about making money off each component, which a lot of vendors do. Like a lot of Qualcomm has to make their money on the chip right. and the display company. Apple doesn't care if they lose money on the chip or lose money on this as long as they make money on the phone. So they can invest in a lot of stuff that for the A7 that you know Qualcomm couldn't do if they're selling it to another company. Imagine the pressure that uh, Apple puts on its suppliers to uh, keep costs low. And that brings us to the depressing portion of the show. If you wish to fast forward, I wouldn't blame you. Uh, Bloomberg Businessweek article by Cam, uh, Cam Simpson. Really, if you read it, I think you should read it. And it's not, by the way, just iPhones, not just iPads. It's every bit of electronic gadgetry from our TVs to our dishwashers to our microwave ovens to our phones to our cars. Even Ford and other car manufacturers uh, do this. Basically, the supply chain goes back to Malaysia uh, and other and countries like that, the Philippines, where they're getting workers in basically very um, nasty ways. And this article, which uh, talks about in particular one worker who uh, was recruited from Nepal and uh, brought to Malaysia, the way the recruiters work, even though Apple's rules say the recruiters are not allowed to, the brokers, the, the work brokers in Nepal and other countries who bring in these workers are not allowed to charge more than a, a month's worth of salary. Uh, these jobs are in such hot demand in places like Kathmandu um, that these brokers can really extort a lot of money from these guys. So uh, they tell the story of Flextronics, which is in Malaysia, uh, Apple said, we need a lot of cameras for the iPhone 5. Flextronics, which makes that camera part, um, hires sub-recruiters going to Indonesia, Cambodia, Myanmar, Vietnam, the Himalayas. For the iPhone 5 rollout, a recruiter working for Flextronics, I'm reading from the Bloomberg Business Week story, contacted four brokers in Kathmandu, Urgently seeking 1,500 men to make cameras. According to three of the four brokers, the pressure to move so many men so quickly was unprecedented. We need these workers. You have to send them today, they said. And so they tell the story. It's such a tragic story of one of these workers who, in order to get the job, had to borrow from a, uh, you know, a basically a, a loan shark in Kathmandu. Torrential rains had destroyed his home. Uh, he needed a job, uh, and he uh, has borrowed two hundred fifty. He paid two hundred fifty dollars to a recruiter, who then connected him to a broker in Kathmandu. He ended up borrowing another three hundred fifty dollars. He had to bring five hundred dollars, uh, six months of his wages, uh, to get to the airport. They take his passport. He arrives. He's working for very, he had at $1,000 in debt before he started the job, basically. And that's a lot of money when the job pays $178 a month. Uh, 107, 12 hour shifts. You get up at 5, you get on the bus, you arrive at 7 a.m. 
12 hour shifts and uh, you're barely making enough money. But the worst part is, in this case, the lenses were uh, rejected by Apple. The re he was he was a tester in November. Dong, his name is, and the other men say they noticed the number of failures appeared to be growing. Production slowed to a drip by the end of the month. They were all laid off, and then because they didn't have their passports, they they stayed in their living quarters for 20 days. Food ran out. They can't go anywhere. It's really tragic. The guy ended up getting home eventually, but still owes a lot of money. Um. To brokers, to loan sharks that he borrowed the money from so he could get this job. So what does he have to do? He has to turn around and go back to another job where he is again a vic could be easily a victim. He's got uh, he's working in a shoe factory for three dollars a day. He's got three hundred dollars in annual interest. Um the thing that's very sad about this story is this is how this stuff is made. And, you know, you could talk, and we do talk about the factories in Shenzhen, and uh, I think they're making improvements there. But those are just the assembly. You can even talk about the Moto X, which is assembled in Texas under humane conditions, but they still get the parts from these companies like Flextronics. It's kind of sad. I don't. Then there's not much Apple can do. Apple's trying to enforce these uh, new rules, but uh, it goes too, you know, it's too too distant frankly, for them to. They can't control what's going on in Kathmandu. Very sad story. And you guys are just wisely shutting up. <laughs> no, it's, I mean, no. It's, it's horrific. Did you read I it? Mean, what, Terrible. Yeah, I mean, what what can you say? I mean, these are events that you just... It's it's as it's, close, it's, close to slave labor as you see, get because it, these guys it, have no choice, right? It, 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 seem, it seems vulgar to comment on them because the reprehensible nature of how people can some people will exploit other people speaks for itself you can't um, you, you can't embroider that with anything so it's not and I, i'm very want to be very clear not blaming apple at all for no this. of course not uh this is and it's and in some ways it's uh, it's us because we buy this stuff i guess the, all you can do is buy less of it <laughs> keep it longer there's enough blame to go around and yeah. apple gets its fair share of benefits from being one of the world's biggest companies and one of the drawbacks is that when there's something like this happens they get the equal and opposite attention for this situation so it's it's entirely fair yeah and there's nowhere else to go i mean you you, you, you can assemble as as motorola is doing in the uh, us as ford does in many cases but you still have to the buy Mac these Pro parts will be done that you still have to buy these parts mm -hmm. yeah and uh, so i don't know i don't know what to say about it uh you it's, hope as a species will mature to the point where it no longer happens globally rather than just locally. Yeah, and it can't hide your head in the sand about it, and we just have to keep raising the issue and yeah. try to do better. I mean, that, not not to get cynical, but I mean, it's it's like there's almost no point, no 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 part of any story that involves really good technology that doesn't involve human suffering or do, doesn't inspire somebody to uh, to to express the baser nature of occasional human existence. Yeah, just like when. You, the, it's a great story. It's a great success story when a school district that's full of kids that are don't have as many advantages as the rest get a, get a grant money, get appropriations so that every kid can have an iPad. And only how many days does it take before the local criminal element decides, oh, great, so a bunch of eight, nine, ten year old kids are going to be carrying around five hundred dollar easily resellable devices. So let's just system, let's just make sure we have a system. We we don't we don't try to mug the same kids twice. But we're going to systematically make sure that none of these kids go home with those iPads and. It's, it's like it's terrible that when you think about the uh, when you think about how wonderful uh, and uh, beneficial this the technology can be if only people would get out of the way of the good thoughts and the good intentions and you just it's it's terrible that every time you think about uh, as something as as lovely as an iPhone 5s or as as uh, as innovative as the Moto X or anything that you really really like you know that that's you don't have to dig too far down before you find human suffering so yeah don't you don't tear out your uh, you know tear out your heart about this try take action where you feel it's appropriate but real just i think it, it's enough to make sure that you never simply forget that such things are happening yeah and that's why i bring it's, it up it's a down it, it, it made sad. me very very sad here it's, it's so mm -hmm. sad and read the story please just so you know um you know uh and i just don't know what the uh, there is really no obvious solution except just to uh, let's do better kids to inform people Leo, like you just did yeah <laughs> Well, and all credit to Bloomberg Business Week, which mm -hmm. wrote, which must be, a, especially for a business journal, 
uh, a difficult story for them to report on. Um, just, uh, it's sad. We're going to take a break. When we come back, happier news. Not really. I work. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> uh, now even Jean-Louis Gasset is just, and, uh, you know, uh, we'll talk. Mais non! <laughs> Mais non! <clears throat> Sacré bleu! Uh, we'll, zut! <laughs> zut alors! We'll talk about other happier things. And why Google has not won in the map war. But first, let's say, there's one thing you can do uh, if you have a gadget, is not just throw it in a drawer or throw it in the landfill, heaven forfend, but recycle it the right way with Gazelle. Sell it to somebody who wants that gadget. That's one less gadget being made, one less gadget in the landfill, and it's some bucks in your pocket. G-A-Z-E-L-L-E -L -L -E dot com. If you're all hot and bothered, you have the old iPad uh, mini with retina display. By the way, they not only buy Apple tablets, but Amazon, Asus, Google... They'll buy surfaces from Microsoft, Samsung tablets. But let's say you have a uh, iPad mini and you're going, ah, 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 I want to get that nice uh, $255 on a good condition 64 gig iPad mini with LTE. That's a great deal. This is what Gazelle does so well. They buy this stuff. They sell it on uh, eBay. They have a special Gazelle store on eBay, which is great, by the way, if you want to buy a lightly used, well-taken-care-of device. Uh, you can you can sell your stuff on Gazelle, get cash in your pocket for your next device, and make sure somebody's using that old device appropriately. Even iPods, Apple TVs, Apple Displays, MacBooks, iMacs. They even buy BlackBerry cell phones, <laughs> HTC, LG, Motorola, Nokia, and Samsung. Visit Gazelle.com, G-A-Z-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. The way this works... You know you're not going to get your Mini, even if you order it today, you're not going to get your Mini for a couple of weeks, right? So the way this works is you get a quote for 30 days. Get that quote now. I guarantee you the price goes down on every one of these things as they get older, right? So get the quote now. You're locked in for 30 days. It doesn't mean you have to send it to them immediately. You have 30 days to decide whether you're going to take advantage of the offer. They will send you a prepaid mailer, so you don't have to pay the postage on anything worth more than a buck. Uh, and, uh, and once you've and by the way, don't just sell and send them one thing. Get rid of everything in that drawer. I just did that. I have a box. <laughs> I should show you my box. It's in the trunk of my car. Of all this stuff, because I moved, I have a gazelle box. It is, it's maybe 100 pounds of stuff I'm going to send to gazelle. I'm so excited. Uh, you could do the same thing. You can get a, a check, of course, PayPal if you want it right away. My suggestion, if you do buy stuff on Amazon, this would be a great way. Uh, to do it, get an Amazon gift card. They add 5% to the value automatically. Their data experts will take a look at your device, check the quality, you know, this, how, how good a shape it's in and all that. In fact, sometimes they even bump the offer up to, if it's in better shape than you thought it was. They'll also wipe your data if you forget to do that. Uh, I'll tell you, this is a, Gazelle has sent out $100 million to over 700,000 customers over the last few years. You should get in on this. It is a gold rush. Gazelle.com. Thank you for their support of Mac Break Weekly. And this is a good, this is one thing you can do. Uh, I didn't mean to tie it into that story, but this is one thing you can do, is make sure that, you, you know, that old device at least gets, you know, purchased and lasts a little bit longer. So, um, I, you know, I don't use iWork to the point where I'm really upset with it, but I guess if you did, um, <laughs> You would be upset. Jean-Louis Gasset running in his Monday note, which I love. I read this every Monday. He's a former Apple uh, international president, right? Or senior vice president. Um, he said, Apple's iWork is another missed opportunity to set expectations. It's more than just iWork. He talks about uh, selling his old Chevy Tahoe and how impressed he was with his daughter. <laughs> who went to the dealer, the used car dealer, and told him all the bad stuff first. She says, the car has uh, dents in the rear fender, a glove compartment door is a little stubborn, the cup holder is missing a flange. However, look at the impeccable engine, the spotless interior, the good as new finish. The dealer was charmed and complimentary. He says, this is the opposite of the usual posturing he gets. He says, the typical seller to touts the low mileage, the documented maintenance, and then tries to hide the old tires and the nicked rims and the white smoke that comes out of the tailpipe. The salesman said, this is how you do it. Give the bad news first. Don't let the buyer discover it. Puts you on the defensive. He says, this guy should talk to Apple's executives. They've done it again. 
They bragged about their refurbished iWork suite only to let customers discover the actual product fails to meet expectations. Fair, Renee? Um, sorry, I'm, my, the reserve for pickup just went live, so I was turning that in <laughs> while you were talking. Uh, no, that's... I mean, it's, Wait, can you go into a Montreal Apple store and get it? Yes. Now? Between, four, between 3 and 4 o'clock and 4 and 5 o'clock, so I'll go right after the show. Awesome. Um, awesome. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it is fair and unfair at the same time. It depends on whose point of view. It is short-term unfair, long-term beneficial. Apple has this... Apple is not afraid of hurting short-term interests to serve long-term interests. No, but he's not saying... It, he understands that. He, and we've talked about this before. It was a complete rewrite from ground yes. up, just as Final Cut was, just as iMovie was, and features are taken out. But he says Apple's executives should not take the stage, as Eddie Q does... And say, quote, this is the biggest day for apps in Apple's history. These news versions deliver seamless experience you can't find anywhere else and are packed with great features. You shouldn't say that. You should say, look, we had to take some stuff out. I understand yeah, no, I that. I absolutely agree with that. I mean, they, they didn't do that with maps much to their, I mean, that, they're still hurting because they didn't do that with maps. They didn't set expectations at all. With Siri, they were a little bit better because they put the beta tag on it. They did do it. that. You're right. Yeah. Not nowhere nearly enough. I mean, they should have really explained. Uh, this Apple has this, people attribute to Apple this ability to under promise and over deliver. So when they do the exact opposite yes. of that, it is even more apparent, more egregious and more frustrating for users. And yeah, I think that's absolutely accurate. If they'd gone out there and said, look, we're rewriting uh, iWork from the ground up. We're making it compatible across these devices. But because we've been so busy doing that, all the features you know and love aren't there yet, but we're going to work really hard to give them back to you as soon as possible. I think a lot of people would understand that would extend them, you know, a lot more, time and goodwill than they get otherwise. That's exactly what Gus says. Yeah. He says, why brag instead of calmly making a case, as you just did very well, by the way, Renee, <laughs> for the long game and telling loyal customers about the dents that in inevitably discover. He also makes another good point, which is that you've got this Microsoft Office 365, which is working beautifully. And um, that's, you know, that's a challenge for Apple. Now, uh, Microsoft's kind of giving Apple some breathing room by not making Office available on the iPad. Could be a bad strategy on Microsoft's part. Mm, Stephen Elop will fix strategy. that. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, man, I, Steve, Stephen will just sell it all off. Yeah. I, 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 I do think they missed an opportunity here. I don't, I don't blame them for when they're on the big stage with 600 members of the media out there to accentuate the positive. And the, they, they stated the overall goal of building a version of iWork that is seamless across all devices, including the web. Um, but however, after the after the lights are down, after people have filed out, uh, they are still going to be talking to lots and lots of different people. So that's an opportunity for a senior executive to say, here is our larger, as Renee was saying, here is our larger long term strategy. Yes. And here are things that we are giving up in the short run uh, that we're going to we believe that we're going to catch up uh, in the future. The thing is, though, that you do have to the uh, presentation is so important. Um, uh, the first time that I, I, I didn't use Keynote uh, uh, for like three or four days after the new version was available. And in that time, I was, I was reading tech notes. I was reading discussions. I was talking to other people who had used it. And I was prepared for a really, really crappy experience. And I was quite surprised to find that it was actually quite capable, that there's very little that I do with Keynote that I couldn't actually make this, this app work. So if I had seen this is their big... You know, this is their big media event. They're taking four minutes out of this to tell me how crappy this new app was. Yeah, maybe. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I would have upgraded to it. I'm not sure if I would have even risked it. And I think that once I started using it, I would not have been open to the possibility that perhaps a unified window is actually a very, very clean and uh, an attractive interface. Right. I would have been focused on, oh, yeah, but if I do a magic move that involves more than eight QuickTime objects on the same panel, look at how slow that tracks in. You know, the old version worked so much better than this. Oh, it's worse so, stuff than that, though. You, I, oh, mean, I, I, I know, I know. I that. mean, that's the problem is basic functionality also doesn't work. Well, they could pick yeah, their no, battles. I, 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 I mean, they could have announced collaboration and not done all the rest, and then people at least, they wouldn't have been promised something that wasn't delivered because collaboration was good enough on its own to be a nice demo for them. Yeah, and it might have been interesting if they simply had, if they had uh, created two separate apps, so to speak, where they kept the old code base as a still a set of $15 per download iWork apps. But then if you want to, free apps, you download these brand new versions, they're not on the same upgrade path as your old, as your old apps. That would have made, really made a, dis a, a distinction between these two classes of apps. 
where people still expect the same features and the same functionality out of the stuff that they paid $15 a head for, but the stuff that they were getting for free, they could at least have that lowered expectation that this right. is a new start, this is a new beginning, I'm going to get whatever I get from it. And then ideally a year and a half from now when those free apps had all the same functionality uh, of the of the paid apps, then you suddenly find people not wanting to buy the new versions and it would have been a seamless transition. Yeah. I mean, the same thing happened exactly with iMovie. Same thing happened exactly with Final Cut. Um, now, to Apple's credit, yeah, well, the other, and maybe the, the other. Go ahead. I, I was saying the, the other problem is that we do we are looking at a, a, a consistent trend that is, for me, very very hard to deny. That Apple really is scaling down, uh, scaling down their expectations of what their software and what their hardware can do. Uh, they're still they they're the hardware is top notch. The performance of the operating system and the CPUs that drive them are also top notch, but they're using that uh, those uh, that that speed and that agility to make things simpler and easier and more approachable. They're not doing it to give you a handheld device that can do a myriad of wonderful things. You you I think that I think that they've sort of lowered the ceiling for Mac OS and they've sort of lowered the ceiling for iOS. Uh, so that if you can comfortably operate within that lowered ceiling, all you notice is that things are faster, things are slicker, things work uh, it work between uh, experiences more easily. But once you get to the point where, look, I've got this project and, man, I don't know why I have to split this document into several se separate projects instead of, uh, instead of uh, keeping it as one big 300-page report. Uh, because the old versions, uh, when I was using this same app two years ago, I could do that, but now the new version doesn't let me do that. That's when you're going to start losing people to Windows. That's when you're going to start losing uh, people to Android. It disappoints me that it's no longer. It, I, I the the one of the best aspirational slogans that a Apple ever had was the power to be your best. That's not something that's really applicable anymore. That uh, that's that, and that's not a that, that's not a, a censure of Apple. It just means that they are no longer trying to they're no longer promising you that these are wheels for the mind no matter what you want to do with this device we will support you and help you do that right now it's we are going to make sure that you have the least amount of stress and getting the things done that you expect to get done that you can possibly have so it's a different goal I, I, I don't think how they i don't know how they could articulate that without making people think that hi we're making stupid fisher price you know leapfrog style <laughs> tablets and computers which is absolutely not what they're doing but it's hard to say that it's hard to make that careful message that we are helping people uh, get more access to a wider range of features with less trouble and more reliability without making people think that and and yet if you want to get to the top five or the top ten percent of the potential of a computer with this with these specs we're going to find it increasingly harder as you get from 91% to 93% to 95% to 96%. Well, to uh, Apple's uh, credit, I guess, or maybe they're just starting to feel the heat, they did put up a page in the last couple of days that talks about uh, what's missing. <laughs> and they said some features in the upcoming releases in the next six months, customized toolbar, vertical ruler, improved alignment guides, improved object placement, improved importment of cells with images, improved word counts. How can you mess up word count? <laughs> <laughs> we miss a few. Right now we, we counted, miss a few. We, we, we counted A and and we shouldn't have. We're sorry. <laughs> I, you know, that's one of the first things you write when you're learning how to program is, is word count. Keyboard shortcuts for styles. Manage pages and sections from the thumb. Anyway, I can go on and on. It's a long list, but I... And then, it, and then their answer to this is you can continue to use these features by accessing the previous versions of iWork. They do point out those are still installed. Yeah. So they didn't take, they didn't get rid of them. Um, but John Louise Gasset's list of things that are wrong is a little bit more than just a few missing features. It's it's pretty yeah. pretty scathing, frankly. Well, well, well again, I think I think it was a very deliberate move. Where they're saying we're, we're this is a leap that we're, yes. this is a leap that we think we need to make, and yes. if we have to make things kind of uncomfortable for the next six to eight months, we're going to do that. And they yeah, definitely could but have, then look they, at they, Mavericks. They definitely could have made they definitely could have made a better uh, better example of that. And look at Mavericks. All the bugs with Mavericks. Uh, you know, I mean, they they released well, a the new thing, Gmail. Well, I, I mean, I, I I just I'll, uh, Renee has something very very smart to say. I'm sure. I'll I'll I'll, I'll get out of the way after just saying that. I don't think that it's reasonable for us to expect that when you have a major new release, as major as iOS 7 was, as major as Mavericks was, that there isn't going to be a transitional period of suck that we're going to have to slog our way through. Yeah. 
Uh, and I think that we have, as users, we have a greater responsibility to be aware of what's going to happen to our devices when we apply this major, major upgrade. Right, right in front of me, I have my, I have my, my, my day-to-day -day use uh, MacBook Pro. That is not on Mavericks yet. Uh, in the other room, charging, I have my day-to-day -day use iPad. That is not on iOS 7 yet. That's because neither of these things is stable enough to my liking for a device that I rely on day in, day out to run my entire business on. That doesn't describe everybody, but uh, and, I, and I know that you know I, I tend to keep my ear to the ground a lot more than consumers do, given that Apple makes it so easy to simply click this one button and, and upgrade. But I think that's going to be part of the new responsibility of being a computer owner, knowing that do not automatically install a major update until you know exactly what this, what this is going to entail. It seems worse than it has been before, but maybe that's just me. Mm. Or maybe it's what I use well, that's more. It's the thing that there's this phenomenon, I experience it too, where you sort of look at the past with rose colored glasses or yeah. you yeah. forget the pain of, that happened in the past. But I have had really, really bad experience with upgrades iOS 2, iOS 3. Um, yeah. I forget if it was Lion or it was Snow Leopard before that. Uh, I, I'm like Andy, the machine I'm using right now is still on Mountain Lion. I, I waited to put it on, I think, six months to even put it on Mountain Lion. And I'm going to wait six months to put it on Mavericks because I use it for production work. But my main Mac book is on Mavericks already and I'm getting two hours more battery life than I got it before and I made an informed adult choice to put it on knowing that there would be some bugs but wanting the benefits that came with it um, and the way they're going into yearly release cycles and the size the sheer amount of code they're dealing with and you know given Apple's organization there's going to be things I luckily have not had any major problems I do have the audio issue which I know how to fix you know through a reboot of all things, but it works. Uh, so it's it's just a matter of, you know, the pain right now is fresh, so it seems really, really bad, and I hope Apple fixes it <laughs> last week. Uh, but I do I do write down, you know, I, I go back and look at my old articles about the pain I experienced last year and the year before, and I'm quite certain I was just as angry back then as I am now. Yeah. <sighs> all right. Oh, Apple. Apple says our business does not depend on collecting personal data. Um... Unlike, I don't know, some other companies you might <laughs> you might think of. We have no interest in amassing a personal information about our customers. We protect personal conversations by providing end-to-end -end encryption over iMessage and FaceTime. I wish they wouldn't harp on that since we know it's still not exactly the case. We do not store location data, map searches, or Siri requests in any identifiable form. Now, what's interesting is they have now done a transparency report. And this transparency report, which is quite interesting, has what some are calling a canary in it. Um, they say we have never been given a, what is it, the Section 203 letter. a uh, Basically a uh, one of those national security letters. We've never received one. So they, they say, we've never received a warrant. But by saying we've never received a warrant, they call this a warrant canary. If that transparency port continues to come out, and at some point that sentence is missing, mm -hmm. it is a legal way <laughs> of saying, <laughs> hey, we got one. <laughs> I like it. Clever. It's like dark matter. Clever. It's the absence of the warranty canary that is... <laughs> telling you something I'm, I, but I'm, I'm sorry I think that if if I were if I were a member of the government who had responsibility for this sort of thing I would be PO'd enough about this and say all right guess what we're You're getting a warrant. I, I'd be like the one guy who has to do the one star review of, 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 of Finding Nemo just because the five star review just the 100% Rotten Tomatoes rating screws me over I love it uh, we're we're going to see we're going to see more of this stuff. I, I I have not I've not talked to anybody at Google, Facebook or and I, I've not really spoken to anybody at Apple about this, but at, at at high levels who is not absolutely ticked off about what the what they're being expected to do and not finding countermeasures to do almost exactly what Apple is saying. So yeah. they know exactly what they're legally required to do, but they also know that if like if we can say well we have no data to turn over and yes you asked us to collect this data, however you did not file your request and such it's they're looking for ways to be able to say look we are unless unless you've been caught with plutonium uh, in your jockey shorts during a TSA pat down, there is no, we're, we're going to find a way not to hand over your information to somebody who does not have access to it. Here's the line. It's the, the last thing. line in the Apple report. Apple has never received an order under Section 215 of the Patriot Act 
We would expect to challenge such an order if served on us. But, as some many have pointed out, uh, other companies did this. In fact, RSync is the first company to have done it. Lookout Security has also done it. The point being that if you ever saw that line disappeared, then you could presume they have received a Section 215 order. Not that that's such a big revelation. I mean, yeah. the fact that Google and Facebook have not made this statement probably is as strong an indication that they have received an order. But so it's what? Just, it's sad well, that it comes well, to this. I mean, it's, it's one of those... Isn't that pathetic? It's one, of my, it's one of my favorite lines from, you know, again, I'm going to quote the West Wing, in a country founded on freedom, what could be more important than privacy? And that was in 1999. And now, you know, it's, it's absolutely become uh, manifest that we, so we just, yeah, it's beyond appalling. Yeah. Um, I think we can take a break and come up with our picks of the week. Unless you guys have a story that we haven't covered you really would like to talk about. I'm going to leave all the lawsuits out. I find them boring and unproductive. <laughs> well, well if, if, if we want to be, if we want to be like live cable news, we can say that there, I'm getting uh, multiple uh, messages from people claiming that the, uh, the CPU performance of the iPad mini is closer to the five S than the oh. iPad air that there is a, measurable distance however i've been trying to find the actual tests that people are performing and i'm not seeing them yet the so iphone is 1.3 and the air is 1.4 so that would mean the mini is 1.3 mm -hmm. I, I won't notice that difference in everyday use and yeah and also we're, we're talking we're talking about how fast how, how many how many cpu cycles happen between cursor flashes while it's waiting for you to type the next thing with the keyboard <laughs> yeah i don't know if you'd That's notice what people it. are usually talking about when they're talking about CPU right flashes. i don't know if you'd notice this is coming from a uh, mac rumors which has Apparently uh, uh, acquired a mini and run benchmarks, um, and uh, they say that it doesn't. This is I, I suspect what I fix it was talking about. It's probably not running at the same clock speed. Yeah, um, that it, might it's just more, be a it's thermal more, issue. Right. Yeah. It, it's it's more important that it's running the A7. If it were running a lesser processor at the same speed as this A7, that wouldn't be as good as having a slower, uh, an underclocked A7 or a or, or a slower A7. It's not a huge difference, according to Geekbench three. The Retina is running at 1.3 gigahertz, which is what yeah. the iPhone 5S runs at. The Air is 1.4 gigahertz. Not a big difference. No. It's not a human discernible difference. Probably not. <laughs> uh, why would they do that? Better battery life? Heat. Uh, Heat. Yeah. Well, this, yes. This, this, yeah, this, this is this is the, the the nature of this device. On on uh, there there are problems that I will notice on a smaller version of the same tablet on an Android that I will not notice particularly on the larger one, simply by which the fact that my hands are covering the entire thing. Uh, and so and so literally there, there is there is no place for a, for a heat bloom to hide. Right. Uh, and also there's presumably That's less point, opportunities less yeah. opportunities to radiate heat out elsewhere. Right. Uh, given how tightly packed things are going to have to be in a smaller tablet. So. And that's what that's what they call it a heat bloom. Uh, I'm saying heat bloom because I like that. The, I hope you it's, coined it's, that and trademarked it. It's it's I, th I think it's a I think it's a I think it's from uh, aerial reconnaissance when they're looking <laughs> right. When, no right. Ser seriously when they were looking at, uh, at infrared uh, photography and video of, oh there's a heat bloom from that shed over there so therefore there are people who are in operation in there. But. Yes, I'm thinking of Orlando Bloom. All right, the guy is heavenly. <laughs> He's I know gorgeous. That the pirate blues, he's going to be still on my mind. <laughs> he's gorgeous. Let's take a break. When we come back, our picks of the week, Andy and I come from the Chicago Sun-Times. Renee Ritchie, iMore.com. Renee, did you get that pickup set up? I do. I'm, tr I'm trying to make sure I get one at 4 to 5 or 5 to 4. It's like, it's like the end of a baseball game here, Leo. It's so exciting. All right. You want us to watch that live, or should we take a break while you focus? No, no, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> if we had a picture of his screen, we would display it, but uh, we don't. So, Chad, can we go right now and pick one up? Really? That's a 128 gigger. Should okay, I, run so down? I so Should I been, send somebody down to get one? Well, the question is, is what version did you get? Did you get the <laughs> Wi-Fi cellular? Because Wi-Fi 32. Why, and then on which carrier? Uh, no, Wi-Fi, 32. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah, I unlocked, misunderstood. Yeah, yeah no, carriers. those are available today. Well, <laughs> yeah, we could just send someone down and pick you up one. Should I cancel my order? Uh, I can reserve this right now, and Would then, you? yeah, and then I'd say... Wait a minute, no, let's get a 64. I only did that because I had okay, to. Okay, okay. Well, you could get the 128? No, I don't want 128. That's uh, just that's just crazy. But definitely Wi-Fi only? Yeah, 94952. That movie two. Scene where someone is trying to tell somebody how to defuse a bomb via telephone. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, 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 no,
Lisa, what should we do? I, I already ordered a 32. I guess I could cancel the 32. Yeah, see if you can still cancel it. You'll take the 32 for a Christmas present? Skip the engraving. No, no engraving, because yeah, that, of course, would slow it down. Uh, I would like the smart case. <laughs> well, am I a sucker to buy that or no? In blue, probably? Okay. Yeah, we have to send some. We'll get an appointment in a moment. Just like uh, just like Renee. Okay. Although his will be in Montreal. That would be the big difference. Yeah. His will be in French. Which color smart case would you like? Uh, can I have product red? Yes. I'm, uh, I'm a fan. I'd like to do my bit. And besides, red's a cute color. Oh, mm. no, thanks you. Okay. Uh, oh, no, thanks me. He sunk all his money into palms, so, so he needs the money. I say uh, select store. Select store, Santa Rosa. Yeah, yeah. Add to cart. Yeah, add to cart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you probably need a yeah, credit yeah. card. What? $668. Because we can get it today. If we can get it today, we can do it before we buy it. Well, go ahead. Uh, For some reason, it doesn't seem like it's it's it still says shipping pickup options. No, you have to continue, right, okay, uh, yeah. Renee? Uh, if you continue on, now mm -hmm. we, you should probably hide that screen as you enter I don't, in my Apple password. <laughs> yeah, you, maybe you should do this. Do you want me to take the ad? Lisa can do it. <laughs> That's the point, is it? Well, go through it, and I think that at the end of the order process, you could say pick up. Right. I don't know. Who can drive? Well, shouldn't we put it near me? Uh, no, you can have somebody pick it up for you. I thought that Kara, can you get her? I could actually get to a No. It says have somebody pick it up for you. I don't care. Well, I, you know what? Let's finish the ad. Let's finish the show. I'll go do it. <laughs> I got an hour. Our show today. <laughs> but, you, but you can't do that, Leo. You can't buy one today. I really think if we should get, if we can, we should pick it up. Do it, Leo. Go for it. You're getting yours, Renee, right? Yep. The Montreal Apple Store? The yeah, Fairview Point Claire. Uh, Canada, like we had two football teams named the Rough Riders, we have two stores named Fairview. It's very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> I do have an Apple business account. We should use that. Don't we? Yep. And then you get a, a percent off or something silly. 2% or 3% Some or something. ridiculously low. <laughs> <laughs> our, show today, our show today brought to you let me tell you something i'm saving a lot of money on squarespace.com so i can afford to get an ipad mini with retina display squarespace.com is the greatest place to create your own website now that we're getting close to the fourth quarter the holiday buying season perhaps you would like to have an e-commerce site maybe you make little cat doilies for your cat to rest upon and, and you'd like to sell your cat doilies online, there is no easier way to set up a site for e-commerce than squarespace.com. You could have it running today. First, go to squarespace.com. Without giving them a credit card or any information except your email address, you can set up a page for two weeks, have the whole place, the run of the place, design. You'll choose from 20 gorgeous templates, customize it to make it the way you want it. They've won design awards from everybody, including the Webby's, Forbes, FWA. It's uh, easy to use, but if you do want help, they've got 24-7 support. They've got uh, webinars. They want a golden Stevie for their support. I mean, it really is great. And then this is the thing that blows me away. So two weeks, you can try it. costs you nothing. But look at the pricing if you decide, hey, I want to keep this store up for the holidays. $24 a month when you buy an annual plan, you get fully integrated e-commerce. They don't charge you transaction fees, unlimited physical, digital, and service products. Unlimited pages, unlimited storage, unlimited bandwidth. You'll never get a bandwidth bill. If you're selling the Furbies, the hottest, the Furby for 2014, whatever that is, kitty doilies, hot stuff, don't worry. <laughs> they track, help you track inventory. They help you calculate taxes and shipping. You even have coupon controls, unlimited. You can do all you want. If you are a developer, the developer platform makes it great, but that's always included. When you register a year, you get the custom domain name free, kittydoilies.net, still available. Or kittydoiliesr.us. Hey, there's a name. I'll let you have that one for free. So we'll Squarespace. Then they'll hook it all up for you. Get started today, squarespace.com. It's absolutely free. But when you do buy, make sure you use our offer code MACBREAK11, and we'll save you even more, 10% off your new account. Squarespace, great way to get a website up and running. And if, if you want to do e-commerce, there is no better way. This is an amazing deal. But also, if you want a blog, if you've got a portfolio, they start as low as $8 a month with an annual plan. Squarespace.com. Time for our picks of the week. Renee, are you done ordering or do you want me to yes. go? <laughs> I've reserved for pickup. And what time? Four or five? Between two and four. Whoa! <laughs> that means you can get there at 201, right? 
Well, it's Eastern time. So. Oh, they text you, though, though, don't they? They'll text you. Oh, I it's don't already know, because today's the day it launched in Canada. We've never had pickups reserved for pickup before. So I think they send you a text and say, your, your mini with retina is waiting. You have 33 seconds to get in here. Theoretically, I have 30 more minutes to get there. Theoretically. Well, quick, give us your pick, and then we'll get out of here. So my pick is incredibly self-serving this week, but we just relaunched the iMore app. So this is the iMore app version 3.0. Like iWork, we rebuilt it from the ground up. Like iWork, we no longer have all the features we used to have, but we have a lot of really cool new ones. So it's an iOS 7 app. It uses all the iOS 7 frameworks. It's got the, um, the swipe to go to the sidebar. Uh, it's got the, um, the navigation between stories. Uh, it's got integration with reading lists. You can do commenting with iOS 7 style avatars right in the app. So if I want to leave a comment on here, I can, I can just go into any, I'll show you up here so people can actually see it. If I want to go into the story, I can just, yeah, uh, it's in reverse. I apologize. I can swipe between the main stories here. Other way. There we go. Uh, so I can swipe between the stories. I can go into a story. I can leave a comment on the story and see everyone else who's commented on the story. And I can even swipe in between stories if I really want to. And I can, and I have the, and hype, the eye hand coordination to do it, but it's in the app store. Now it is still free. It's got all of our articles, all of our podcasts, everything that we can do. We're still working on it. We'll have an iPad version soon, but it just launched in the app store yesterday. Um, and we're really, really happy with it. So please check it out. Awesome. Very nice. Andy Anako, your pick of the week. Uh, I got a lot. Uh, when I uh, posted that photo of uh, my mobile mobile's news broad, broad podcasting video casting studio 2000 Dopplers setup uh, from that uh, airport lounge when I, uh, that I was uh, podcasting from last week, uh, a lot of people asked me like about this light that I was using to like have mobile illumination. So I thought I'd make that my pick of the week. This is the Micro Pro uh, from Light like Panels. Uh, it is a really super, super good light. Uh, it's all LED. It will run off of uh, a variety of uh, AC voltages, but it will also run damn near forever on a set of six uh, AA batteries. Uh, so it is. Uh, it also has a couple of nice little attachments to it. It comes with this little stand so that you can either put it right inside the hot shoe of your SLR or camera so you can use it like as a, just as a video light for your camera. Uh, or it also has a tripod mount, which is what I was using uh, last week. So just put it on like a little tabletop stand or a floor stand. Uh, and as you can kind of see, it really puts off a, a, a good amount of light with fresh batteries. I mean, this is actually quite painful to look into, so I'm not going to look into that. Uh, but it's also adjustable with this knob here. So you can, hit, you can hit exactly the amount of light that you want. So this is a smaller version of the professional like LED light panels that you see uh, a lot of studios using. Uh, and it's also, uh, there's another reason why I have this picture behind me because this is like one of the superstar utility players in my in my gadget bag uh, because uh, this is not, the, I'm really happy with this. I, I, I knew that I was going to be getting a chance to see this, the, the space shuttle while I was in LA last week. I definitely wanted to get a picture of the cows in front of it. Uh, and I, as I often do, I toss this in my bag because this gave me, put right in front of the cows like this, gave me the exact right amount of fill lighting that I needed to separate the cows from the background. So whenever I'm traveling, sometimes I'll, I'll have a briefing where I'm not going to be sent home with hardware, but I'm allowed to play with the hardware and photograph the hardware. This always goes inside my bag because it is much easier. I, I get the shot much more quickly and I'm much better shot if I have, if I'm using this as opposed to a, a flash, because I can simply aim it exactly where I want that light to go. Uh, and then I can also say, oh, no, that's too bright. I want that a little bit. I, all I want to do is I want to highlight the edge of that so it separates from the table a little bit. And so I can get great, great pictures just using this as a little DIY uh, illuminator. It's not cheap. It's like a $300 light. But if you need mobile light, whether you're shooting video or whether you're doing photography where you need that sort of little, humble, little fill light, you will find that this is a solution to so many problems. It really does earn its weight. I love it. Yeah. And look at this shot. I mean, it really makes a difference because you get that fill. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I could point to you. You look at the shots I took of the, uh, uh, of the uh, Kindle Fire HDX where, again, I don't – it's not like they're setting up a studio for me in that office. It's yeah. just like on a coffee table. And if I spend more than a few minutes taking pictures, it's probably not going to be very polite. But that's – I get so many – not – 
I, I hesitate to say studio quality, but much, much better than what you would get with just trying to take a picture with the uh, on-camera flash or whatever time you have. And also, I should mention that uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you necessarily carry this with you while you're traveling as a way, if uh, as as an illuminator for your cell phone, but that is actually shot with a cell phone, uh, and you would never ever able ever be able to get like flash sync to work uh, on a, on a, on a phone like that. But if this is just it's just on all the time and always giving you light, and so that always that gives you a way to create the kind of picture where people will be surprised to learn that it was actually taken with a cell phone. I did a. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Last note, because I'm I'm very pleased with this with this gadget. Uh, I also took a picture of the underside. As you're walking around and you've got your camera and you're sort of looking for interesting photos. And I noticed that uh, the, uh, the 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 wing flaps on the back of the space shuttle, like there's like a gap between them that you can see the parts of the American flag that's hanging on the back of the hangar. So I really want to get a shot of the underside where you can see the the heat resistant tiles and just enough of the flag. And it wasn't coming out well because it was just a, a, a cell phone camera. Then I realized that, oh wait, I've I've got this powerful illuminator too. So I was actually holding this illuminator like this up. So it was actually illuminating those black tiles Ooh. while I was getting the regular ex exposure from the flag in the back. So as I said, it's 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 a great thing to have in your bag where you will at one point you'll be at a point where in a lot of different places where you'll you'll realize that oh well I guess I guess I have no solution to that problem then you realize that wait a minute I've got ultra bright steady LED light that's adjustable <laughs> in my bag I have a solution to this problem and that it, it saved my neck so many times we love light panels they were our original <laughs> lighting provider we have lots of light panels uh, in our studio and I have a few of those uh, as well really good stuff and they last forever I mean they mm -hmm. really yeah. I mean, I was, it's it's like, I, I did not put fresh batteries in here before I left. And I was like, oh, I bet the batteries are dead. But nope, yeah, I can't no. remember the last time I changed the batteries. And yet it's still, again, point of pain, <laughs> brightness. <laughs> I was going to demonstrate the uh, Knock app because uh, it's been getting a lot of attention. Uh, except that, unfortunately, there's a little flaw in the setup. Sarah now has to knock to turn on my... Uh... <laughs> so... <laughs> So the knock, knock app is kind of a very, it's a really cool idea. Um, uh, you put the app, which is $4 on your iPhone, and you put the desktop app on your late model, by the way. It has to be a late model Macintosh. And then what happens, uh, and I just rebooted, so maybe I can get it to work now, because what it does, it uses the uh, low energy Bluetooth, so that's why it has to be a late model Mac. It has to support Bluetooth LE. Um <laughs> uh, to unlock your Macintosh by you get within range of your Mac, locked Mac, and you knock on your phone twice. <laughs> and the Mac goes, hello. Uh, unfortunately, um, it doesn't have a way to say which Bluetooth low-e device, low-energy device. And for some reason, um, it's unlocking itself by attaching to you, Sarah. So I, uh, I, I, I'm going to try to set it up again. <laughs> it says, lock your phone. We'll take care of setup on your Mac. Okay, my phone is locked. Okay. They have some work to do. It's a great <laughs> idea. I got it working at home. So when I get home, I have to have the iPhone within Bluetooth range of my Mac. And then I knock on it twice and it wakes up. Um, but unfortunately... <laughs> For some reason, it didn't see the iPhone sitting right next to it running the Knock app. Apparently, Sarah has it on her iPhone, and uh, so it's now associated. So now Sarah can basically unlock my uh, my Mac anytime <laughs> she wants by knocking. It's enough to phone. make me want Apple to do it. Yeah, cool I idea, think though. I think I'm going to have to stop recommending this, <laughs> this application. <laughs> Worked great when I tried it at home, but setting it up here today was kind of a less of a. So we're seeing the opposite of the Colbert bump. It's the <laughs> Laporte. <laughs> So, you, by the way, if you're looking for it on the App Store, it's kind of hard to find because there's lots of other apps with the word knock. It's knock, unlock your Mac. There it is. Without typing a thing, your phone is the password. That's the name of the program by Knock Software Incorporated. And then do the same thing on uh, searching for the, uh, the uh, website because you need to download the app from a website uh, for that. Um, just Knock Software Incorporated will do it. Because if you just search for Knock and app, you'll get all the articles about the Knock app. Not to knock the I, knock app. Why have I not been approached as a spokesperson for this? <laughs> Inaco. Inaco. Inak. That's what they should have called it. Inaco. Then you could have found it. Andy mm -hmm. Inaco. You can find him at the Chicago Sun Times. That's where he writes. What are you working on today for uh, the Times? 
Uh, wrapping up my review of the iPad Air, which I took for its first field excursion last week. Uh, and after that, a, lo a more a longer think piece about the nature of the iPad, which is been Ooh, I like that. for about a week. Yeah, I could say we could see some of that coming out of you today. Exciting you, time to be an iPad like this. Yeah, uh, it's great to have you as always, Andy. Renee Richie's at iMore.com. Get the new iMore app, and you will you. you will be in touch with Renee always. <laughs> you will be living with you. Remember, Canadian Canadian listeners, you have. But another 23 minutes to get your Renee costume together and get to that store before I'm, Renee does. I'm really, t I'm, I'm totally torturing Renee by, by slow playing this. You understand that, right? So, Renee Ritchie, nice guy. Go ahead, just go get your Mac, go get your iPad. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We do this show every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time at 1900 UTC at twit.tv. Watch live if you can, because we love having you in the chat room and so forth. But if you can't, Hey, it's okay. We got on-demand audio and video available at the after the uh, fact. Twit.tv slash MBW. You can also uh, go to our Twit site for a couple of other reasons. We have a survey we're looking to get your response to. Helps us sell ads on Twit. Helps us understand you better. Twit.tv slash survey. And we're getting our best ofs together for the end of the year as we do every year. And if you've got a memory from uh, one of the previous Mac Break or this one, any Mac Break Weekly, you thought, gosh, that should really be in the best of. Go to twit.tv slash best of and uh, don't worry about, you know, we ask for, all, you know, time code and stuff. Don't, if you don't, if you don't know <laughs> when to, you know, if you don't know the time code, that's okay. Just your best idea of, of when you, when you saw that would be great. If you want to be in studio with us, hey, that's easy. Just email tickets at twit.tv. We always have a nice little studio audience for this show and most of our shows. And we love doing that too. It's nice to have you guys here. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next Tuesday. Now get back to work because break is over.